Talking with the experts. Transform your website into a lead generating machine and learn storytelling and messaging strategies with Ryan Hulk in episode 539. Statistically, most people do not ever scroll back up a website. So once they've scrolled down and passed the section, unless something stuck out in their minds and they want to confirm they really read it, they're not going back up. So if you don't have a button and a couple sections down, a repeat of the same button and a couple sections down, a repeat of the same button, you're going to lose people because most people never make it to the bottom of the page. And if they're more than a couple swipes away, even if they think you're the right answer, they may not click the button. And that sounds horrible for users to think that they might be that lazy but it's amazing to see that that's what the statistics show. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts, where we believe that success is a journey and every journey is easier with help from friends. That's why we bring you top-notch experts and real business heroes eager to share their lessons from the road to success. We delve into new topics each week, effective marketing strategies, innovative problem solving, financial planning, and team building. We tackle everything you need to know to grow your business and keep it thriving. Whether you dream about launching your first startup or a business veteran looking to shake things up, we've got you covered. With each episode, you'll gain knowledge, boost your confidence, and be inspired to take action. So, grab a coffee, make yourself comfortable, and join our exciting journey. You're not alone in this. We're here, guiding you, cheering for you, and celebrating each milestone. Let's turn your business dreams into reality, starting today. Here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson, from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is all about business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms, and on YouTube. And today, it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Ryan Hulk. And Ryan is going to be discussing with us how we can create a business website that turns visitors into leads and customers. Now, a little bit about Ryan. He is a speaker. He's an author, a marketer, and a brand messaging strategist. He is a 20-year marketing veteran and a creator of the Distill Your Story framework, Hopefully, we'll be discussing that during our time together. Ryan specializes in helping brands identify their unique story, simplify their messaging, and deliver it strategically, both online and in person. Ryan combines storytelling principles with marketing practices to help brands be memorable and referable. He has helped personal brands, coaches, family-run bricks-and-mortar businesses, multi-million dollar green energy firms and statewide not-for-profits. Welcome, Ryan, and thank you for joining me on Talking with the Experts. It's lovely to meet you. Rose, it is great to meet you as well. I'm excited about this conversation. Wonderful. Tell me a little bit how you ended up doing what you're doing. You know, what brought you into helping people create um, strategic and uh, referable websites? So I actually got into marketing kind of uh, out of mistake. Um, I, before college, looked at graphics and marketing, and I also looked at music, and I decided I'm going to do music. And I got into music, and there were some great things about it, but there were some challenges that I didn't love. But one of the cool things that happened as a musician was I ended up getting the opportunity to market different events and different things that we were a part of. And that opened a door for me to walk into an organization who said, we saw some of the work you did, would you come and help us? And so it was kind of an opportunity for me to say, well, let's try marketing because that's what I had also considered before I went to school. And so let's try that. And that ended up being a 10-year full-time job at a nonprofit. Um, And what it did for me was it allowed me to learn marketing, but also storytelling because so often businesses are um, 
we rely on marketing like we're just going to spend money. We're going to spend money. But what I learned in the process is when you could combine a clear story about the organization with some marketing principles that your marketing budget went further. And so when I went out on my own and started serving a lot more uh, small businesses, what I really discovered was websites were the place that really you saw first and foremost, if people were going to get leads in their business or weren't, came down to how clearly they could talk about the products and services and their business on their website. And that really is storytelling. So it's why I call what I do kind of a hybrid of storytelling and marketing, but it's also kind of why I focus on websites because I know it's the first place that most people are going to interact with you as a business owner and really learn about you and your story. Absolutely. Now, many small businesses spend a lot of time and a lot of resources on creating these websites that aren't yeah. converting. You know, so, yeah. you know, what sort of steps can they take initially to make sure that, um, you know, they're getting eyes on their on their websites? So in the last two plus years, every phone call that I've gotten about a website came down to one of three issues. Uh, the first one was that their messaging itself wasn't clear enough. That like we we were getting people to visit the website, but they weren't taking action. Something was confusing visitors, and so they were bouncing away. They weren't taking action. They weren't clicking buttons. They weren't taking lead magnets and those type of things. Or there was a design functionality problem that got in people's way. Or there was a technology issue that got in people's way. And so what I'm finding is that usually the messaging is the tip of the spear. And that's the place where most businesses get stuck because we could we could figure out someone to build us a website. We could figure out, to, we could hire somebody to make the tech work. But most business owners hold the message. face-to-face -face and have three, four minutes to talk about your business. It's another thing online when you have seven to 10 seconds and making that transition is where a lot of businesses struggle. Agree with that. Um, you know, quite often you go to a website and it's all very pretty and everything, but mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, um, encourage me to click on any of their links or, you know, right. prettiness is all very nice. I, I don't get me wrong. You know, a, a, a visually pleasing website is all great, but you know it's getting them to click on um, links and 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 uh, folders and you know lead magnets and all those sorts of things. Um, how can we encourage people to do that more often? Um, because you know, I take my own website for instance. I love my website. I absolutely love it. I've yeah. spent a lot of hours on it, and you know, to me, it's it's. Um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but people, you know, some people aren't staying. They they're bouncing away, and and I don't know why um, that's happening. You know, so you know, how can we encourage people to use those lead magnets? So the very first thing that I look at when I'm doing a quick review of someone's site is I look at the first section that loads when I hit return on my browser. And that's traditionally called the hero section of your website. It's the part before you ever scroll that people are going to see. And that section statistically is where the majority of people are only going to see what you have there. And you have about seven seconds to convey in a, really two sentences or less the heart of who you are. And I think of it in terms of like a recipe. I want to clearly say in that top section, I want to articulate who the audience is that I serve, what solution I provide to that audience, and how it makes life better with a win if they use my product or service. And then to have a supporting image that aligns with those so that I read two sentences and I see, oh, this is the audience we serve. This is the solution. This is the win. And here's a photo that is supporting either someone's using the product or they've had success, or it's you as a business owner, coach, consultant. 
Um, one of the things that I see a lot of businesses struggle with is they put great photos on their website, kind of like what's sitting behind me, which is beautiful, but doesn't connect people to the product or service that you provide or the win you provide. And so in that opening section, the very first thing is I want people to see that I'm in the right place. This business has a solution that's possibly right for me, and I should keep scrolling. And so that's the very first moment that I want to capture people. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the heading section or hero section is, is mm -hmm. really, really important. It's not only to be visually appealing, but it's got to be informational as well. Um, yes. So that people know who you are, what you do and what you can provide and how you as a business owner can help your clients or potential yep. clients. So, so moving down the website, um, you know, once you've got the hero and, and that's all really great, what are the next steps that we need to be taking? So the next thing you want to be thinking about is your headlines in the following sections. And the reason for that is that most people don't read every word on your site. They're going to skim the headlines first and decide if it's content that really interests them. And so I think about if I copied and pasted the, just the headlines off of this page and I put them in a Google Doc and I read down the page, would I understand at a 30,000 foot level what this business does and have an idea of what the next step should be? Because I want the content in the first few moments of the site to answer the question, is this for me? I want a reader to keep reading and go, oh yes, this is for me. Oh, yes, it's like they're reading my mail. Oh, yes, they understand the pain point I have in my business. They understand the challenge I have in my home. They understand why I need a cleaning product like this. And so your headlines help you do that, but then your supporting copy helps reinforce those headlines. So for the people who read all the information, they keep, they're nodding yes and going yes, yes, yes. Because the more someone nods, the more subconsciously they're thinking I should click and learn more. This person has something for me. Absolutely. Now when, you know, a lot of people have, um, you know, buttons to press, you know, contact me, book a, book a chat, um, you know, download this document. Where, how sh often should they be spaced? Ah, phenomenal question. And that is uh, a tension point that I have with a lot of people. So I like to think of this in as three separate ideas. You need to know what the first most important call to action step is that you want people to take. And typically that's something that aligns with how you would bring people in if you were having a conversation and saying, hey, just go to my website and do this action. You know, you've already broken the ice. They aren't there to read. They're just there to take an action. So is that a book a call? Is that you know, contact you. What is that? And then I want to know what my second one is. And then I want to know if I have a lead magnet, what that last idea is. But I think about the first most important step. And I think this has got to be in the upper right-hand corner because uh, in the Western world, we read left to right and we automatically pause in the upper right-hand corner of a website before we go down and start left to right again. So you want to have it there and then you want to have it always where you are within two to three swipes of your finger or rolls of your mouse to have another button that reinforces that same idea. Now, you may say book a call in your menu, but you may say schedule a meeting or you could say book a call or some version of that, but you're action item is essentially the same because you're really just wanting to reinforce if you do nothing else here, this is the one most important thing I want you to do. And statistically, most people do not ever scroll back up a website. So once they've scrolled down and passed the section, unless something stuck out in their minds and they want to confirm they really read it, they're not going back up. So if you don't have a button and a couple sections down, a repeat of the same button, and a couple sections down, a repeat of the same button, you're going to lose people because most people never make it to the bottom of the page. And if they're more than a couple swipes away, 
even if they think you're the right answer, they may not click the button. And that sounds horrible for users to think that they might be that lazy, but it's amazing to see that that's what the statistics show. Put my original website back in God 2015. Um, I had several buttons on, on mm -hmm. my front page, um, but going and calling an action on different things. So one was to yes. book a call, one was to do something else, and one was to do something else. Is that advisable or should all of the buttons lead to the same place? So you can have a couple of them, but what I like to think about is one is an immediate option and one is a someone's going to follow up with you option. So um, maybe it's a contact form because you know it may be a day before someone gets back to you. The other is book a call because it's going to go straight to your calendar link and it's going to get followed up on. Or if you're a brick and mortar, that button is for a phone call that's going to happen right now. Um, so I, I like to have two of them, but the one that I repeat three, four, five times down the page is always that number one, most important one. The secondary one, like the contact form or something, I'll put in the top menu. I may put one section down. I may put it at the bottom in the footer. I don't feel like I've got to repeat that as many because that's the secondary thing that I'm calling people to do. Uh, but the whole point is don't overwhelm people with 15 ideas. Yeah. I visited an insurance website this last year looking for car insurance. They had a hundred different calls to action on the homepage. Oh, wow. I, I started counting and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This page just keeps, there's a hundred things they want me to do. L legitimately a hundred. Um, I thought you're losing everyone on this site. Like, the core of what you're trying to tell me is no longer simple. And really, if we can get it down to one or two calls to action at the most, plus maybe your lead magnet, then you're going to be in a, a good, sweet spot for keeping people connected to your message. Absolutely. The KISS principle is probably the best thing mm -hmm. I can think of. And, you know, less is more when, when it yes. comes to your, especially your front page. All the other pages are ancillary, obviously, to to whatever right. that you're doing. Um, I, you know, what about the, there are you know plugins like Opt In Monster, or mm -hmm. yeah, Opt In Monster. Yeah, uh, you know, are these uh, lead magnet type pop ups, you know, good for your website, or are they taking away from your core message? So I love Opt In solutions like that. Um, the thing that you've got to be careful of is that Google doesn't mind that you use them, but it says if you detract from the user experience, they may ding you for it. And what that means is this, that you want that pop-up to wait for seven to 10 seconds before it shows up. Because then it's only being shown to people who have already sat on your site long enough that they've read far enough to go, this may be actually for me. And so at that point, Google goes, okay, we don't mind that you've shown them an offer because they've been there long enough. It's when it slides in in the first half a second, it's it pops up in the right-hand corner and does something goofy and you know, you got this animated thing happening. Um, that is when it really detracts from the user's experience. But no, by all means, your goal is if they're not going to book a call, they're not going to use your contact form. I want them on my list. I want to build a relationship with these people. I want to connect with them. So that's really one of the best ways to do it is to have some sort of way of bringing it up in front of people. We just have to acknowledge I don't want this to be obtrusive to the user's experience. So use those time delay features, use those um, on exit options that they give you in the fine, you know, when, if someone slides up to close the window, then it pops up kind of thing. Um, because then it's based on how they've actually engaged with your site. It's not just randomly throwing it to every person who lands there. I so dislike when he, go to someone's website and there's a pop-up as soon as you enter the website and you know you you have no choice but to to read it and it might not be of anything of interest to you what I'm wanting for is the 
is the you know front page and and get the information yes. there and, and you're right the pop-up should come after I've you know viewed the information that that I'm looking for now let's right. talk about menus because that yeah. is very contentious uh thing amongst website developers um you know how should a menu be set out I'm, I'm talking about you know the the um horizontal ones you know obviously you can have vertical ones as well but you know what order should we be having our our menu items so i like to think of the navigation section of the menu as that it has to be as easy to understand as possible and it is not the place for creativity on your website so uh, i think of that in two ways first of all the language of what we call the section headings on our site are really important. I see people getting super creative. They don't want to say about us, so they come up with some pithy little statement. They don't want to call it services, so they come up with some crazy little phrase that I, I click on it and I go, that's your services page. You should have just called it services. And the reason for that is that we have used some of those phrases so many times you see them so repeated on websites that they have embedded what we're supposed to see there. Now, the tension is we've seen it so many times we may not pay enough attention, but because we've seen it so many times, we know what we anticipate finding under that button. So just be clear, it's not the place to be creative and clever. Like, tell me, this is my services page. This is my about us section. This is how to find out my history. This is, you know, whatever it is that you want to, you want to share in your menu. And then I think of starting with the stuff that is most about you on the left and most about the user on the right. So that about us, homepage about us, comes towards the left. In the middle, I've got something about your services, your product offerings, details, and then on the far right are any call to, uh, to action options for them. Because at that point, if they've started to go through their thinking, oh, now I'm ready to take action. And that's always going to be in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, again, less is more and keeping it simple really is yep. the option. Um, you're right about you know, we're so used to certain um, terminologies for things like services or contact us or about us or, you know, those sorts of things. That they're the, the the words that we're looking for when we're going to someone's website. We don't want fancy things that we don't understand. You know, it means the same, but, you know, we've been conditioned over all these years to look yeah. out for those certain words. And, and I, I think, um, you know, people will most often... Use your website if they can understand the terminologies that are used, especially in the menu if they're looking for something in particular. Yes. And in terms of keeping people on your site, really, if the goal is to connect with them, have them go, yes, this is a place for me and to keep reading, I've got to make it as simple as possible for them to find the next level of information to keep learning more. And I call it going down the rabbit hole that I want them to click once more and read a little more. And I want them to be so engaged that they click and read a little more and then they take action. And the only way to do that is to be super clear. Absolutely. No, totally 100% agree to that. Ryan, um, where can people find you if they want to uh, work with you or know more about you or, you know, have a chat with you? So the best place is at distillyourstory.com. And you will find info about a number of things that I do, but really it comes down to two things. It's messaging and website implementation. So if you're at a place where you're trying to figure out how to talk about your business or you need clarity in those areas and you need to figure out how to do it online, then that would be the place to find info about me. You also could find a free uh, website messaging audit that I have there that will actually walk you through. I've got three things that you can review on your site in under 10 minutes that will help you know where might the gaps be that I'm losing people on my site. Absolutely. So if you want to find out more about Ryan, please you know head over to his website at distillyourstory.com. You can find him on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. He also has a YouTube channel, 
which is really interesting, Ryan. And I might pop over and have a bit of a look at that later. And also don't forget about his free 10-minute website audit um, that you can find on the distillyourstory.com website. Ryan, if you were to give any sort of feedback, um, information, um, I don't know, some tip or hint um, to our listeners today, what might that be? That the absence of a clear story allows someone else to write the narrative for you. So it's our job as business owners, as business leaders, to make sure that we are telling the story that we want told over and over so that people can repeat it. Absolutely. Storytelling is really, really important in building your website. And I think a, yeah. a lot of us as business owners forget that. We, we're more focused on ourselves rather than on, on what we can do for our customers or our clients. The, the website's not about us, the business owner. It's about our clients and what we can do for them. So, you know, wording is really important and how you mm -hmm. word, um, you know, and the words that you use that convey that you are helping your client, not helping yourself. Yes, very much so. Yep. It's really about the outcomes that we help them provide, not the tasks that we're doing. And that's only going to be known if we can talk about it clearly. Absolutely. Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today and uh, good luck with everything in the future. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.